This is Papa Frank and today we are going to break down the XP grind in Enlisted, discuss what I think IMO is wrong with it and how Gaijin could improve on this. When I started playing Enlisted, I thought Gaijin wanted this game to be the next Battlefield, not like the next dead game as in Heroes and Generals. Now a couple of days ago, I did a guide video on campaign leveling. And I told you guys how to improve on your XP gain per match. That is kind of the base material to this video. So if you missed it, you can check it out here. We are going to be breaking down this today. How much is the grind for premium, freemium players? What is there to be done? And how the premium pricing, especially premium squad pricing, affects the morale like literally the morale of players. Now, I'm going to start out with this and let's get into the thick of it. First, this is going to be a bit overwhelming, but I'm going to explain it as simply as I can. So what I did here is first I calculated how much XP it takes to finish, to finish an entire campaign. Second, I broke down per match XP gains, per match XP gains to see how much I would get in a match, whether using premium or being a free player. I averaged my matches and I took the average XP for them, of course, keeping an eye on the medium XP for every match so that I wouldn't stray too far. Um, <clears throat> median means median means that I'm taking that I'm taking the middle number from the list and you check uh, and you check the XP the guy on the middle of the list got um yeah so what this means is that I'm taking the middle the middle of the numbers I, that's what median is and I'm taking the XP from there well for for right now I'm not going to give a huge base XP because there are matches where your XP goes crazy. Um, the median and, and, and I'm taking the average of the medians usually so that, so that I am, I can create an average scenario for an average player that plays this game casually to calculate how much time it would take them to complete one faction of one campaign so i tried building up the entire formula here's what i got we have the xp pool which gets divided by the the average xp per match now the average xp per match for free to play players are is 3.6k then you get around 800 of 840 matches to be played that's a lot, right? But after that, I take the formula and I multiply it by the minutes it takes for an for for a match on average. For me, it's around twenty minutes on average to uh, to play a game. Yeah, there are bigger maps with ma with with more uh, cap points, or there there are. Usually, usually, if if you meet a guy with two hundred and fifty to five hundred kg bombs, usually the match is over pretty soon. <laughs> anyway, weeks, um, and then I divided by by sixty to get how how many hours should someone I mean should someone play to unlock one faction. Now, I take this. Four hours. So we, with that said, yes, four hours a week play time, but you'd play this game as a full. If you play, so so if you play four hours a week as a casual player, it takes seventy weeks to complete a faction. So you get you get the entire the entire faction unlocked 70 weeks now in my terms from what i know a year is made out of uh, made up by 52 weeks so you would have to play for more than a year 
to unlock one faction as a free to play player no free no premium time no premium squads just free but and here is the gap the gap is that it would take you 23 weeks to unlock one faction if you're playing premium but the same amount of casual play time so we have the xp pool which gets divided by the average xp per match which already shows a huge gap but let's move on after that you multiply the average minutes a match would take which is 20 right and then you divide it by 60 you get 280 versus 93 hours and then you get 70 weeks versus 23 weeks right this is un uh, unacceptable this is this gap is huge even if you play premium you have to play the game consistently for three and a half years 3.6 but whatever for three and a half years to to to, to unlock anything you want right I, I mean it it is everything but if if you just want to 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 unlock one specific thing let's say the panther in the petal of berlin you want to unlock like uh, the p47 in uh, in uh, the normandy campaign right dude get good and grind a lot that's what dimitri tells you what the hell man this this is unacceptable in my in my honest opinion i think this is too much to play this much 10 years what is this world of warcraft and even then world of warcraft gets expansions every year expansions every year what, what is this all right so you're gonna tell me so here is here is the the the, the loophole you you're gonna tell me all right all right you know what you know what i'm going to be playing this game what 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 casual no i'm gonna gonna play this game four hours a day not four hours a week all right so you want to tell me that you are going to, for the next for the next year and a half you're going to be playing this game as a as a as a part-time job so your your part-time job is gonna be all right i'm gonna play this game you're gonna tell me that you are going to be that dedicated of a gamer to not play anything at, at all anything else nothing else just this game alone for the next year and a half so when your girlfriend wife mother anyone will ask you hey what are you doing on christmas evening well first i'm going to finish grinding my doing my daily grind and then we can open presents okay so you're gonna you're gonna tell me that you're going to be playing this much consistently for a year and a half to unlock everything in the game holy shit this is too much this is huge and the gap in between these i mean that's huge as well and what i think is wrong not necessarily not necessarily the way you accumulate xp and the and and yeah there's a huge gap yeah there's a huge gap between free and premium players but what i think the root issue the root cause of of the issue is the xp per level that you need to get it's 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 the pool xp that you need to grind and not only that but certain things are so 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 lo locked locked out so far down into the campaign you need to i mean who's going to play for a half a year a game just to unlock something that they would really want to play you will lose you will lose that player gaijin you will lose that player in the first 2 weeks they won't care about that shit there are other games including that that vehicle or whatever they can they can just bring out their wallet and go play battlefield you know it's a one time payment gaijin this is i think this is wrong and 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 with with that said even if you if you play 
more hours per week which i calculated with four hours the casual the casual player the casual the casual people that will play your game will be will be around four hours a week that's that's huge at 10 years hell no nobody's gonna nobody's gonna even know that there there wasn't there was an enlisted existing 10 years ago I, I, and that's just my opinion and look look at me look at me i i don't think so so here here is here is my thought on this i like this game a lot and and there are a lot of things that i like about it I don't mind, and I'm speaking to, to, to the Gaijin guys right now, I don't mind you trying to be everything, as in trying to be a battlefield game or, or going up against the big dogs, you know? I like that. I like that attitude. I, I like what I see. I like the game. I like the gameplay. Um, not the, the huge bombs. I, I don't really like that, but I like the gameplay. I like how, how certain thing, things feel, especially tank gameplay. But look, I don't mind you trying to be everything, but it would really hurt me to see you failing at being anything, you know? Please, come on, let's work on this. Listen to your community. It is trying to tell you something. The other issue here is the premium squad pricing. And let's get back to the game. Now, the premium squad pricing is, is abysmal. I mean, I, I'm just going to be honest with you, with you here. It is abysmal, dude. Where, where, where do I, where, where do I see the price for the Battle of Moscow? Where, where I can see, where, where I can actually see prices. Look at this. Forty-two hundred for a vehicle squad, an infantry squad for thirty-seven hundo. The premium squad pricing and bundles. While the bundles for CBT, I do understand. You're trying to you're trying to fund your game de game's development, and I get it. I don't really get why some premium squads are so expensive, though. I can buy five AAA games on G2A for for forty two dollars. You you see what I what I'm getting at? I can play four different war games for after I after I after I paid them for free i don't have to unlock anything in them and even even if there is a slight a slight uh grind to do i don't feel it because i feel like everything is unlocked i can play it from day one i don't have i don't feel the necess necessity to to grind premium squads should never exceed 10 to 15 bucks this isn't war thunder this isn't War Thunder. Again, this isn't the battle against World of Tanks. This is competition against Battlefield, Call of Duty, AAA titles that not only have a flat purchase price, but lately they are cheaper and cheaper, albeit you can, you can buy cosmetics. But this isn't cosmetics, this is pay-to-win mechanics. These are pay-to-win bundles such as, such as your upgraded premium squads that shred stock squads. And we can all agree that if you buy right now a, a premium squad and you play it on day one, especially the PPD squads and the submachine gun squads, I'm, I'm telling you this, you're going to shred new players. You're going to shred them. They won't even know what hit them. Especially the tank squad too, the, the Soviet premium M M4, uh, M4A2. That, that one too. All in all, look, all in all, I think there's a huge room for improvement and let me make this clear. I don't think the game is bad or shit or whatever or, or whatever. Even if, if I have my eye on, eyes on you with those 250 to 500 kilogram bombs, which literally obliterate the, the entirety of the team and the enemy team wins in seconds. Those huge bombs obliterate stuff. But the game, gameplay, artwork, and the War Thunder elements you brought, you're borrowing, you're borrowing, are really cool. And I would like this game to get in a really good place. I would, you know, I love this game. I love, I, I, I loved playing War Thunder. And now I feel like I found my game because 
I have War Thunder in in a in a bigger scale battle with with much more going on, and I like it. I like the game's pace. It's not as slow as uh, Head Let Loose, nor nor is it as fast paced as as you'd you'd say uh, Battlefield or or playing a a fast paced shooter like uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that if you listen to your community and us to help you achieve the balance between all of this, I think this this game could be huge. So anyway, guys, if you like the video, you know what to do. Stay tuned for more guide videos and in-depth breakdown videos. I'd also ask for your thoughts. What do you think? Am I the only one feeling like this? Also, help out a new guy on the platform. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and a sub. I appreciate you being here and see you next time.